Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at G-Friend's new highlight medley for their album Walpurgis Nights. I am still almost certain I'm saying that first word wrong. I've not heard anyone else say it so I'm just going to carry on till I'm told otherwise. I wasn't expecting this today, if I'm honest. I was like, oh, the next G-Friend thing is Wednesday. I was planning what I was going to be filming tomorrow, which is going to be G-Friend and Mamamoo. Um, and then I was just scrolling through Twitter, replying to some messages, and then I saw this on Source Music and I was like, I thought this was Wednesday. Then I was like, oh, it's already Wednesday in Korea, just not in England. So I was like, oh shit, right, okay, fine. <laughs> Better put a clean t-shirt on. Uh, so let's get into this. I'm um, intrigued to see what we're getting. We already know a couple of the things because we've already heard some of the songs from the concert, a couple of the, uh, the duets, subunits, whichever way you want to uh, call it. We've already heard slightly uh, Mago itself from the teaser and also what was shown on Knowing Bros. So I'm not sure if we're going to get anything different to that song or if we're just going to get a cleaner version because we've only had like eight seconds and then we had people sort of laughing and talking over it um, on Knowing Bros. I would say yesterday. Oh yeah, yesterday because I had a video of it yesterday. So there. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what the rest of the album might sound like. G-Friend always have diverse sounds. They always have, um, especially in the last uh, Song of Sirens, we heard more songs that sound like classic, like now would be classed as old school G-Friend when, when they were the cute little innocent schoolgirls. So I wonder if we're going to get any sounds like that because we know Mago is, well we don't know for certain, but we know what we've heard is a, a semi-retro 70s vibe. I was actually thinking about it earlier and I was thinking it reminds me of like ABBA and sort of um, 70s, 80s Eurovision music if anyone's cheesy like me and listens to Eurovision. Blame my dad, not my fault. Um, I was just thinking like it's got a bit of a bit of an ABBA vibe to it which is different um, in today's world. So let's see what we get. I've spent too long waffling on already. You're probably all bored gone to the next video. So let's get into this. Sound would be helpful. Go. Ooh. It is new. Oh, that was quick. God damn teasers. Ah, oh, sometimes with some bands for the highlight teasers, you get maybe like nearly twenty seconds, fifteen seconds. But we'll go through it all, and then we might scan through it again afterwards. But that was a different look. I enjoyed it. I was trying to listen to the music, but they're, they're too damn pretty. I'm trying to listen to the music. I don't. Hmm. This is like a. I don't know. A bit like 2000s popish music, like Western American pop. This isn't. Is this like a uh, city pop? To me it's like uh, 80s uh, sort of semi-synth pop, like Prince type. Again, it's a bit, this whole album feels like it's a bit of a retro, oh, hello, a bit of a retro throwback. With an ice cream, that's all good. I think we heard this one. Is this one of the duets, subunits. So far, we haven't heard any classic G friend. We have heard this one, I definitely know that one. This were really, really cool. Really cool set as well. This puzzled me why we have a couple of the older songs on here. It doesn't sound like it's reworked. I'll carry on, but it puzzled me when I was looking at the track list when it was first released and I was like, 
Apple and Labyrinth. It's like, I like them. I'm glad it's included, but it's like, hmm. Maybe it's like, because it's the last chapter. Maybe some people that haven't got the other albums and they're sold out and can't find them. So they're on here to sort of package everything together. Honestly, one of my favourite songs of the year, this. Quite guitar, eh? That was a weird sound. Well, note to end it on. It feels like someone just slammed the piano or hit the piano. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go through one more time. One more time. We have we'd, so we don't have any classic G friend sound, which which to me classic G friend sound is. <laughs> please don't be mad. Is the sort of anime sounds with a lot of strings and sort of build up. Maybe some of the some some of the guitar stuff and different sort of instruments like. You know, classic G friend. Like you know more than I do. I've only been with the girls like half a year, but we do seem to have more retro -y sounds. I don't know if it's just me that feels like the whole album itself is more not retro G friend, but retro sound as, as in the wider range of music. So I'm wondering if this is. Chorus leading on, or not chorus, it could be the chorus, leading off from what we've already heard, or this, you know, what we've already heard precedes what this is. This is the one that stands out the most in sense of a different sound, like it feels a bit sort of that 2000 light R&B pop kind of mix. I'm not going to say like early early Beyonce because I don't really know much Beyonce I try to stay away from her but that kind of I don't know it doesn't feel modern modern it feel it still feels like a throwback like a lot of this album it's different just look how good looking they are can't I can't not be distracted by them this is yeah this is like proper 80s pop, like really early, off the wall Michael Jackson sounding pop. I guess this one could be classed as maybe a modernish sound. I obviously didn't listen to it the first time round for obvious reasons. Yeah, so yeah, that we have heard this on the concert. I still, I'm still wondering if we're going to get the actual concert as a release. So, you guys might know these names more than me, and the wider range of K-pop or G-Friend, are they, are they still got the same production teams and everything, or are we having more of a, um, a, a big hit influence with the names involved? I don't know that sort of stuff. Hmm. I, I do wonder why we've got these songs at the end. Because it's, it's, it's an album, but adding these on feels like maybe, is it filler to make it an actual album? Or they might have already said why, and I'm just babbling, and because I don't know. It feels like because it's the end of this chapter for this, I don't know what the little symbol means, the little square within a square. Because um, it's the end, it's like, right, we'll put these on, so it's like a, not a compilation, but it sort of ties a bow on it all and finishes it off to help tell the story. But then you'd think Crossroads would be first, Labyrinth, then Apple. I'm overthinking. Just enjoy the goddamn music. Yeah. 
Like I did a I did a video earlier in the year, like my top ten songs of the year. And this got a special mention because if this was the lead song, it'd probably be number one. I do like the sound of this one. This one might be the one closest to the to that traditional sound because it's we do have the strings, but we have more of an electric guitar, which sort of, ch sort of changes that classic sound slightly. Too cute. Too cute. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, this was a, a, a welcome surprise for me. I thought I had another day until this arrived. So, it sounds like we've got an awful lot on our hands. I really, really wish that somehow, through watching all these videos and the power of osmosis, I could just understand Korean. So I could understand the lyrics. Because I'm just going by the feeling of the music. Which is one of the reasons why I like K-pop, because I, I feel like I don't need to know the lyrics to get tone and feeling of the song but I like medallies and stuff like this when we're getting actual vocals and I don't know a single goddamn word I'm like because ah, it might help tell the sort of story of what the song's about itself but oh well here's what it is I get learning but I'm intrigued by this album um, I do really wonder how Mego ties in with the overarching story um, I'm obsessed with stories and bands. Um, one of the reasons why I really got into, like, had dived into G Friend was because of the story, and I really want to know how how this '70s retro setting fits in. Uh, that that to me is really interesting, and, and especially the fact that we seem to be getting a lot of retro sounds this year in K-pop, and the progression of G Friend from you know Crossroads, Apple and now Mago, it's like those are three different sounds telling a story. I just find it really, really cool. So um, I don't know which song like stands out as in one that I can't wait to listen to in this. Probably all of them because they all sound really cool. There's no ones, sometimes in a highlight medley they might be the odd song where I'm like, a bit boring. Like <laughs> the highlight medley for Twice's album, last album. I can't remember the name of it. I can barely remember the name of that song. Really shows how much I'm, I'm on top of that. But that had a few songs, because that was a full album as well, and I was listening, I was like, it's not going anywhere, I just don't feel anything. I'm not feeling like that like urge to be like, I want to listen to the whole album. This is different, I feel like I want to listen to all these songs. And we will in less than a week, so I can't wait. So let me know your thoughts below. Like, share, subscribe, do all that YouTube jazz. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.